making progress when you really look at where we were on April the 1st, all right, and how we started out just really with phase one, phase two, you have seen the development and growth of a lot of guys. Uh, depth, we're always looking for depth. I think you, you saw that with the draft and the number of guys that we picked up. So that's always going to be important because you're going to have injuries throughout the year, and that's why it's so important uh, as a staff that we really develop those young guys. What do you see Who's taking a a lead in that battle for the strong safety? Oh, it's still open. It, it's, it's still too early to really determine that. Uh, everybody's going to have an opportunity to be able to get in there and showcase their talent and perform. So uh, right now, we're just really trying to lay a great foundation, all right? really the fundamentals and technique of the position. Those guys doing a good job of really picking up the system. So again, it's too early to determine who's going to be the starters. What did you see out of Greedy before you guys drafted him? And then how has he been in the first couple of days out here? Well, number one, uh, he's long, he's athletic. Uh, this game right now, you talk about the look at the different receivers and the types that we have for his big body. So uh, I love long corners. Uh, he's definitely that, very athletic, uh, can run. Uh, and he's very physical, you know, uh, and that's important in the run game with me that our corners tackle. So, uh, again, we don't have pads on right now, but you can see that athleticism out there on the field and the way he moves around. Well, it's, it's hard to see everything here because we're not in pads, but you can certainly see the competitive spirit. Um, he likes having fun. Uh, it's the best way I can put it is uh, he likes to have fun, but he's not a clown. I think people misconstrue how much fun he likes to have play in the game and around people. But I'm telling you, when you're in the meetings and you're out here, he wants to be coached. He wants to be great. Uh, he's a serious uh, he's a serious guy when it comes to the game of football. In terms of the skill set, what do you see there? Uh, tremendous, tremendous arm talent uh, and really, really uh, has a unique knack once he gets out, outside the pocket to see receivers down the field and throw it accurately. Todd, your quarterbacks in Tampa Bay last year were aggressive. It's no secret Baker Mayfield's pretty aggressive quarterback too. Going into year two, how do you find that sort of balance between aggression and taking what the defense is giving him week to week? Well, it's part of it. I think you can always have shots down the field where if your quarterback is, you know, if he's dialed in enough, then he knows you have shots built in, but you can always check the ball down. So I think that's part of it is being aggressive. Trying to be able to get explosive plays, that's how you win, is being explosive and don't turn it over. Unfortunately, we, we didn't do the latter last year. I think they're both very similar. I think, uh, you know, it's basically maybe how they uh, follow through or, you know, how they strike the ball. I think there are slight differences, but they're both strong-legged, right-footed uh, kickers. What I talk about a lot, you guys have heard me say this all year long, is for a place kicker to be effective, he's got to have great timing so he doesn't get it blocked off the edge. He's got to have great elevation so he doesn't get blocked up the middle, and obviously accuracy. All three of those things play into it, and all three, uh, both those guys do all three things very, very well. So we just got to continue. Right now, Austin doesn't have the timing down because the other three guys have worked together with Greg, Charlie, and Britton uh, in terms of the timing of the, you know, we want to maybe be around 1-3, one, 1-3-0, three, one, three, one, one, two, one, one, three, is our parameters. And Austin's a little bit slower than that right now, but as he continues to work with those guys, he'll speed it up a little bit. Right, so you talked earlier about buying into what the Indians were doing. When was the last, I can't think of the last time I looked at offensive, defensive coordinators on this team and not be impressed with them. And some of them haven't done very well. But these guys look like they actually know what they're doing. Are you going to say they won the press conference? They won, won the OTAs. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wins the press conference. When was the last, uh, other than uh, uh, Bobby Valentine, who said, was the last other, one? Other, Bobby, Bobby Valentine, Valentine was made up enough for 10 guys. Or other than Adam Gase, who, went, who was introduced as the New York Jets head coach, and his eyes all of a sudden were this big, and they were just darting everywhere. Well, he just realized he was a head coach? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Wasn't that a guy that everybody was pushing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in, the, you know, he's Peyton Manning's guy, and, you know, there was that thought that, um, not that he had helped, create Manning, but that he was a real sharp offensive mind and everybody was looking for an offensive mind. Instead, you got Freddie Kitchens, who turned out to have an offensive mind, even though uh, he doesn't quite come off like, a, a, you know, a, a bookworm when, when it comes to studying game plans. When you look at um, Steve Wilkes and Todd Munkin, if you have doubts about, about Freddie Kitchens, does, do they alleviate those doubts? In any way? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think they help, certainly, yeah. you got a couple of guys that are uh, have had success and, and uh, or experienced and well-respected in the league. Um, and we've all said before, and I know you've been a proponent of, of not 
um, overburdening head coaches here right. with play calling. I think when you have Munkin here and he's been successful and he understands what Freddie wants, he can take a lot of that responsibility. Yeah, I, I agree off. with that. It's you just wonder they had no history together before, yeah. so where would yeah. that cohesion? Yeah, gonna, co where would that coalition? I think you could say that from? about this team across the board, Les. I mean. You know, the, you remember the year that Philadelphia started amassing these players and signing free agents, and then somebody said, "We have a dream team here," and they ended up going seven and nine or something like that. It's just not that kind of game where you just throw people together and think, "Oh, they're talented. We'll be twelve and four. It's just yeah. not. And if they they could prove prove that you know that can be had, that can be gained in a in a single training camp, maybe, when with a good start, but. You know, it's a tough league to turn it around and I've, win it. I've spoken to Doug Deacon numerous times about this, where now you need to, to get the cohesiveness in, uh, between linemen is three, four weeks, three, four games. When he started, it was three, four years, really. Yeah, yeah, and those guys were kept together usually and, right. and played a lot together. So it's, hey, they're, they're, very, you know, they're going to be very good, I think, whether it happens this year or it comes next year. I think they're going to be vastly improved, but... The, you know, this idea that suddenly every team in the division is, you know, looking up to them because their roster is so much better. I, I bet that's not the narrative in Pittsburgh no. and Baltimore. And it might be after this year if the Browns prove out, but at this point I, I totally agree with you. 